I also need to restore this Fluke 8020B multimeter. This was my uncle's and then he died. Make sure the fuses are good. Look at this double-sided fuse thing. Isn't that funky? Those fuses are right as rain! Unbelievable! <laughs> I like his newest video about solar freaking railways! Man, like you can sell solar freaking whenever. You know why solar roadways happens even though it's completely stupid? It's because government officials have like a... Uh, you know like when you go to Best Buy and they're pressuring you to get the warranty? Because if they don't, they'll lose they'll lose hours. We're not on commission, but we'll 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 get our hours cut if we don't sell enough of these. That's how it works. Politicians are kind of the same thing, but they have to, you know, they have to do a bunch of like green projects. So they're like, oh, it's green and and this is the kicker with solar roadways. It's on the road, which is something the government has dominion over. That means we can, you know, we can do it. You know, it's our property. Even though it would make a lot more sense to put the solar panels on people's homes. Like they do in places like Germany. So I think that's why solar roadways is such a, it's like catnip for these governments. Because it ticks every box. Because, you know, like if it's like, oh, hey, Ben, put a solar panel on your roof. Like a solar panel, like on my garage would be the perfect place to put it because my garage roof faces south and there's no trees well there's probably most of the day it's pretty sunny it'd be a perfect place to put it except for you know I'd have to increase the power between my garage and my house because right now I think it's only six gauge which is about 50 amps oh no but if I had electric electric guitar electric guitar electric car <laughs> in my garage that that could work so you could you know, use it to charge it up, because I drive so much, you know. But, you know, the government doesn't have dominion over my roof. So it's up to me if I want to electrify it. Whereas the roads, or, or a bike path, or whatever, that's owned by the government. But, or you could just, you know, put a, put a shade over the road, like, you know, or put the solar panels beside the road. That train thing was, well, you know, he had a video about it, so you can, you can go watch it. <laughs> it's like, that would be just, that would be destroyed the first time like a cow got plastered. Or a human, that's a really common way for people to finish themselves off. Yeah, not to mention, like, if you have all these solar panels in series in a railroad track, that means the further you go, like, the higher the power would be, which means you would need the entire length of it to be able to transmit that amount of power so we're like oh yeah we've got 10 miles of solar panels so that that's going to be a lot of power that it produces until it breaks so that's that's a ton of current so you're gonna have to have really really thick wires to transmit that and <clears throat> solar panels are dc which means they are inherently inefficient or much less efficient at transmitting power than ac nikola tesla could have told you that Unbelievable! Oh yeah, David. Uh, Dave Jones had had one of these on his mailbag once. Yeah, here's. I've cleaned it up. I'm not gonna retrofit it because I like I like this dingy color. I can't imagine it was that much brighter when it was new. Uh oh, Bud has sees me using Q-tips. He loves Q-tips. He likes to chew on them. If I leave him like in my kitchen or my bathroom or something, he'll he'll go in there and he'll just start chewing on them and knocking them over and then. I'll find them like in my living room and stuff. And then the, the Roomba will get stuck on them. The Roomba, that's that's Bud's brother. Bud was kind of whiny for a while. So like I started doing that pinball project. I probably talked about this, but I'll talk about it again. I started doing that pinball project back in July of 22. So I spend most of my time, probably like four days a week upstairs in my upstairs office, not down here. So like when I would work down here, which is what I did most of the time for like the last four years. Well, of course, I haven't had Bud that long, but, you know, he would just either come in here, or even if I closed the door, he would just sit outside the door in a box of packing materials and just chill out. He didn't really care, but for whatever reason, if I'm up, if I'm upstairs in my office, even if I leave the door open to let him come in, 
he just whines like meow, 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 especially like around oh, I don't know 10 to 10 to noon in the morning that's when he's at his whiniest he's like meow 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 it's like I can't play with you all day so what I do since I haven't built the final version yet is I have this oscillating floor fan and so I tape a laser pointer to it and then I aim it down the hallway hey. I don't know why my uncle didn't fix this. Seem kind of worried, like, when I'm in my 70s, will I not want to do any electronics anymore? And actually, like, these days, I, whoa, I haven't done a lot of electronics. I feel like my skills have maybe atrophied like a weak muscle. I can still solder pretty fast, though. Guess I've got that workshop coming up. I'm still going to make a video about that before the workshop. I've been working on that. Yeah. So I guess it's just a random. This is like the 1970s. It's like, actually, this meter is from the early 80s. Well, they had super. It's like the yeah. It's like the 1970s and early 80s video. Super 8 cameras, old flukes. What more could you want? This weird shielding. It's like, are these for test points? There's really no test points under it. <clears throat> yeah, this part was a little awkward. Gotta kind of like cram the buttons in. Wait. Oh no, I'm sorry, you have to cram the circuit board in. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, actually, maybe it's not. Oh, oh. Weird, that uh, went back together a lot easier than it came apart. Oh, the sponge is still good. The sponge is what, 40 years old? It's not too bad for a 40 year old sponge. Steve Carell is the 40 year old sponge. I declare bankruptcy. This instrument contains no. This instrument contains no operator serviceable. This instrument contains no operator serviceable parts. Oh yeah, those fuses. Obviously, those would like just stop someone dead in their tracks. It's like one of these uh, screw bosses was broken off. Yeah, because I only had two screws that I removed from this. Uh, now I need a battery. This fine fluke deserves only the best brands ever. Like Amazon Basics. Oh man, this plastic cap takes up a lot of space. Okay, there we go. Ah, she'll be good for another 40 years. Whoa, look at the color of this piece. Well, it's probably made with a different type of plastic. Look at that. <clears throat> Bob's your uncle. Hmm, milliamps, two amps max. Okay, so it looks like each one of these has a state. So, volts or milliamps. Well, here's a battery. Do, 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 do. Let's see. We're in DC mode. Come on, turn on. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, this goes up. So yeah, there's ohms, volts, milliamps. So this would be two volts range. <clears throat> Excuse me. I wonder what happens if you set the range wrong. Does it explode? 1.574. It's time for the fluke shootout. That yank is making fun of my voice. Unbelievable. 1.569. <laughs> It's what? Six hundredths off? That's not too bad. DC AC and then the sound icon here. Alright, so <clears throat> go to ohms. Then Oh, it beeped. Oh yeah, there we go. What happens if I set something like a range? Does it not beep? Oh, it still beeps. Come in, come in, over! 300, so 2K range? Nothing. Uh, hmm. I'm on ohms. Why well, doesn't do anything? Oh, that was 300K. <laughs> Ahem. 
<laughs> There's your problem. Oh, it's pretty close. Two ninety nine. It's not the fastest thing on the planet, but it's not bad. It's interesting. It doesn't actually tell you. Well, yeah, the scale. This is the scale because that's just what four digits. It looks like. All right, so thirteen. I guess would be here. Yeah, I guess that beeps if there's anything. Oh, oh, it, the range is 200, so that's why the decimal place is one off. See, look, I mean, it is 130 or times 10, 13. Still crazy after all these years. Ah, 12 ohm. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, that's really impressive. Here's a diode, let's use the new fluke first. 0.586. Sorry about that. Okay, that's a good shake off, but you know, it's in the ballpark. Here's the watch project I never finished using one of the AT Tiny One series chips. This one does, uh, you actually can put Nintendo ROM data on it, and it draws the screen. It's kind of like a precursor to my new uh, my new uh, workshop. Oh, uh, timed out. Yeah, there we go. All right. Well, the bench says 40 milliamps, although the bench probably isn't that accurate. Let's uh, try it with the modern fluke. 40, yeah, it's Going between 44 and uh, 46. Wow, the uh, sleep current on this is really good. It turns off the screen and everything. It's uh, 56 microamps to sleep. Okay, so I'll switch this over to milliamps. Two amps max, so 200 milliamps. Uh, let's see. So we're probably gonna be in the 200 milliamp range. Hmm, it's passing through, but it's not uh, giving me a, an image. Did I miss something? Oh, pfft. right, That's that switch has got to be out. That's interesting that it allowed the current through even though it wasn't uh, switched the correct way. Well, yeah, bang on. It's not as fast as the new Fluke. Because the new Fluke could see the vacillations between 44.6 and 45.5, but still returns the same average of 45. Turn back on watch project that I never finished. I assume you could put modern leads into it. Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah, standard banana plug. I actually had to replace these because Bud, it was weird. Like he didn't. It was weird. He he grabbed onto one of the wires and that didn't destroy it. But then the meter fell off the table. And using my lightning fast reflexes, I caught it. But that that's actually me catching it was actually what caused the cable to tear. So I would have done better to let it flop onto the ground. Sullivan tested that Super 8 camera. It's actually pretty nice a couple days after I did the repairs, but I was working. I'll probably test it in April, actually, because I have to get that MGC project done. I'm in the last crunch, last couple weeks of crunch for that. You know, gotta, get, gotta get Call of Duty. Probably get Call of Kitten shipped on time. Yeah, it was the probe tips, not the circuitry. Yeah, nice fast audio response. That's what you want. You want the you want the audio as fast as possible. I know that sounds obvious, but a lot of cheap meters don't do that. There's like a little bit of a delay, and if you're actually there's actually a little bit of a delay, and if you're actually going through something like beep beep, like pinning out a bunch of stuff, you don't want to waste a millisecond. Literally a millisecond. You don't want to waste it. You want the audio as fast as possible. Yeah, this thing cleaned up nice. Well, my uncle may be dead, but I hope he's glad that I fixed one of his old tools. Oh, this kickstand. It's kind of low. Well, it's kind of low, but the screen is also angled forward, if you can see. Actually, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, you know why they did that? It's because if this thing was like up high like this, and then you're coming in here pushing these buttons, it would be more apt to tip over. But when it's lower like that, it's got a little bit of more, it's a little bit more sturdy versus like that. Well, of course, you're always going to be holding it with your thumb anyway. I don't know why this, well, whatever. It's just, 
it looks lower than a normal meter, but it works. Nice. This meter has new life. I will put my uncle's name on it so he won't be forgotten. And then me. Although I usually write heck, so I don't know why. Well, it matches now. See, heck. That's how my dad labeled all his tools, too. He had a license plate that said heck as well. I thought about doing that, but then what if I flip someone off in traffic and then they find my website?